Hey everyone, what's up? Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 333. Kind of a fun number. My name is Jeremy Lesniak. I'm your host for the show. And today, we're going to talk about trying new things. Man, that's a cliche, but we're going to dig into it, and I'm going to give you some new thoughts on that idea. If you're new to the show, you might want to head on over to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com to see all of our other episodes, our interview episodes, other topic episodes, and really just kind of get some more context, some, some deeper understanding of the people that we bring on the show and the topics that we tackle. If you want to see the other stuff that we do, stuff beyond the podcast, you can find that at whistlekick.com. Whether that's our products, our other services, everything from gear to, oh, what else do we have? Um, I'm, I'm thinking carefully when this is going to air because of some of the other stuff that's on the way that, honestly, by the time this airs, there will be other stuff. But just in case it doesn't work out, I'm not going to say it. So just go on over to whistlekick.com and check it out. Of course, if you want the easiest way to know what's new, you can sign up for the newsletter. We do it one, maybe two a month. Whistlekick.com, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. You can sign up for it pretty much anywhere we do websites and just get a good idea of what's happening with us in front and behind the scenes. The title of the episode is Trying New Things. And that's something that we've all heard from the time we were small, right? Your parents told you to try new foods and try hanging out with new people and try new sports and try, try, try. And why do we have to do that? We have to try new things because it's kind of hard to know what will benefit you, whether it's enjoyment or health or any of the other positive outcomes that come from inexperience unless you've experienced that thing. But when we talk about it in the context of martial arts, there's a lot more that we can talk about. Yeah, sure, we can talk about cross-training. We can talk about training with new people, even within your own school. We can talk about trying your, your techniques in a new way. But it's broader than that. To me, it's, it's more of an overall concept, a willingness to experiment. And so by trying new things, I'm actually going to encourage you to experiment, and I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to give you some of my thoughts, not just as a martial artist, but as a business owner, of where and how experimentation plays a part. Now, if you follow us on social media, you may be aware that we've been playing with a morning show concept, Monday through Friday, and honestly, in the early days, it was seven days a week. I have rolled out of bed and done a 10-minute morning show. We started it entirely on YouTube and just yesterday released an episode on Facebook. And I'm recording this on a Wednesday, even though it's going to air on a Thursday. And on Thursdays, the plan, at least for now, is to try doing live on Instagram. Now, why are we doing that? Why are we kind of bucking the the efforts that we've made and mixing the pot up again with a show that, while it's certainly not huge and not even close to as big as the podcast, is growing and has received some positive feedback. Because I don't know what I don't know. For all we know, Facebook is the place that this live show should go. It could be Instagram. And if not, it's good to know that YouTube is the right spot. Whenever you do something, you should be learning from it. Whether that's you've learned this is the right way or this is the wrong way. And that's a mindset. People go about their day and not recognize that the things that they do right are educational. We've all heard the cliche, you know, you learn more by messing stuff up than getting things right. And that's absolutely true. I fully believe that. But if you approach that same mindset to getting things right, you'll look and you'll find, hey, there's still opportunity for progress. 
there are still ways that we could experiment. There are still things that are wrong. Every time I record an episode for this show, I get stuff wrong. I screw things up. Now, some of those things you never experience because we edit them out. It might be the longer pauses that I wish I wasn't taking. It might be the times that I go back and record a section again. And that's the beauty of this format, is that we get to do that. And you don't always hear my mistakes. But to be honest, I've been leaving more of them in. I think it's a little more authentic, and it saves us a little bit of time. The more effective I am as I'm recording, the less time it takes us on the back end to bring this episode out. What if I knocked it out of the park so well every time that we added a third episode? I don't know. We're not planning on doing that, but we would have the option because we would have the resources to do so. And when I look at this show, this morning show, which by the way we call First Cup because I drink my first cup of coffee every morning live on the air. There are plenty of people who would say, no, no, just stay with YouTube, just keep chugging along with that and see what comes from it. Well, I like to learn and to iterate, to continue to improve as quickly as I can. That's how you get growth. We've got a stable foundation with what we're doing with YouTube. We're still going to do it three days a week. But by adding Facebook and Instagram one day a week each, I don't know what the results will be. Whether there are benefits or not, I will learn something. Now, how does that apply to martial arts training? If you go to class or you teach class and you do the same things over and over, you've got a pretty good idea what the results are going to be. If you're the instructor, you've got all kinds of options, nearly an infinite number of options. But not all of them are effective. And if you're the instructor, you're probably looking at the students and saying, you know, they're the ones that really have the opportunity to try doing things differently. Because there are so many things that you could focus on, even within basics. You could prioritize your stances. You could prioritize power or speed. You've got the opportunity to experiment. But if you're the student, you're probably looking at the instructor and saying, well, they're setting out the class, what happens in the class, the tone of the class. They're the ones that really get to experiment. And the issue with that is it's really easy to forget how much control we have because we tend to be so focused on the bigger stuff, the macro level. When you consider the nuance, there's a lot of options. Let's say you're at a school that does key eyes or key ups or spirit yells or whatever you might call it in your school. I've been to schools that practice those on every movement. I've been to some that practice it only on certain movements that are designated or sometimes on the 10th repetition. I don't know too many people who put thought into deconstructing and experimenting with, I grew up with calling it a ki eye, so I'm going to call it a ki eye, with their ki eyes. I could focus on volume. I could focus on trying to scare the person next to me with it. I could focus on the way it makes me feel as I project that sound during my technique. That's a pretty small thing. And there are three ways that I could experiment and see what the results are. Now, to be honest, I'm pretty sure that if I experimented with volume, the outcome would be, I wouldn't be able to speak well for the next couple of days. <laughs> but is that something I could train? Would that get better over time? I don't know. I could try it. And you could apply that same mindset to absolutely everything you do in your training. Some of you out there know that in 2016, we held a tournament. A martial arts tournament. We called it the Whistle Kick Martial Arts Showdown. It was a big event. It went well. I learned a lot. And the result of it was a book called 
how not to hold a martial arts competition. And it's actually available as not only a book, but a, a full online course. Because I learned a lot. I learned a lot from the successes, but also the failures. And one of the major themes through the book and through the course, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll give this one away, and if you want to find more out about it, you can go to karatetournamentbook.com. Uh, I think we even release, a, if you sign up for, the, for that newsletter, which never goes out, uh, you get a few chapters. At some point, I'll go back and, and work on version two of that. But I got other stuff going on right now. Anyway, that's a tangent. Back to the main point. One of the recurring themes through the book is to constantly iterate. And the way I think of it is making things 15% different every time. If you've got something that works really well, and it's tried and true, and you know what the results are going to be, change it up 15% or so. Because if that 15% that's different is a complete bomb, if there's no benefit to it, you still have 85% of what you were doing. But more than likely, at least some of what you do will be beneficial. And it's entirely possible that it will be much better. By making those 15% changes and taking the good and integrating that and continually approaching what you do, honestly, in and out of martial arts, with that 15% adjustment, you will advance whatever you're doing at a very rapid rate. The majority of people seem so afraid to fail that they're not willing to budge from something that they find that works for them. Well, that flies in the face of our slogan, never settle. Settling is to believe that you can't do better. Well, either you're settling because you're scared or you're settling because you're arrogant and you believe there is no improvement. I think both are BS. One of the reasons we do so many different things at Whistlekick is I'm always trying new stuff. 85% of what we do is steady. We make sparring gear. We have a few other products. We have some other projects like this podcast. And those things work well. But if I'm not constantly throwing stuff against the wall to see what sticks, I'm missing out. And not only am I missing out, we're missing out. You are missing out. So whether it's your martial arts training or your job or your relationships romantically and non, if you're not always trying to test the waters and see what else is going on, what's new, what could be done differently, you're missing out. And it doesn't mean you can't have open conversations with people about how you want to do this. Go to your martial arts instructor and say, you know, I love your classes. And hopefully you do. And I'm not saying that I want to do anything differently. I don't want to go elsewhere. But I want you to know that I'm going to start experimenting within the parameters, within the rules that you set for me as your student. I'm going to try doing my forms a little bit faster sometimes, a little bit slower sometimes. I'm going to focus on power sometimes and speed others and my breathing other times. And I want you to know that I'm not doing this because I'm attempting to be disrespectful or I'm being lazy, but because I know I can be better. And one of the best ways I feel I can get better is to try taking the information that you've given me and applying it in different ways.
I'll bet all but a very small percentage of martial arts instructors will be thrilled to hear that you're taking such an intelligent, such a cerebral approach to your training. And I know that you're going to have amazing success if you do that. Maybe you even keep a journal with it. Maybe you have to sit down and really take a look at what's going on around you to know what you could do differently. This is not something I expect would come easy to everyone. But I believe that if you spend some time practicing the skill of understanding what you could do differently, you'll find it. You'll find that skill set, that practice of creating these 15% changes and you'll be blown away with the results. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I want to know, is this something that you do? Is this something you've tried and it's worked? Or maybe I'm way off base. Maybe it doesn't work for you. Either way, give me some feedback. Email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com or head on over to the website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Drop a comment in the show notes for this episode, 333. Love numbers like that. Of course, you can follow us on social media. You can leave some feedback there. We are at Whistlekick, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. Those are our main channels. Of course, you can find our episodes on YouTube. You can find stuff at the website. You can find us in any podcast feed you can imagine. And maybe you'd be willing to share this show or make a purchase or leave a review somewhere. iTunes is kind of the, the standard for leaving podcast reviews. and. I would appreciate it because, hey, I love doing this, but as you might imagine, there's a lot of expense going into this show. As I record this, you might have heard different audio quality. I'm on a portable recorder because this is just when I could get to this today. This recorder costs a few hundred dollars because I care about the audio quality. That's enough. All right. I will, I will stop. I will stop doing that. All right. That's it. I got some stuff I got to go take care of. I want you to go take care of some stuff in your world and make it 15% different and see how it's better or worse. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.